Can you just kind of give us the base case here, not only why the Fed should cut, but why they should cut before their next scheduled meeting in mid-March? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on. Uh, so the base case is that you begin with the observation that uh, when the Fed is close to the zero lower bound, close to being out of uh, tools, uh, it should try to keep the economy as healthy as it possibly can at all points in time. Uh, so you have to, when you have such low um, neutral real rates, low um, baseline interest rates, you have to be hyper sensitive to downside risks. Uh, what are those downside risks? Well, I think we saw some of that manifest itself even today in markets that um, basically the coronavirus is a fear factor, shock for the economy, uh, would lead to a, a big downturn in global demand. Um, that would lead to appreciation of the dollar, dragging the Fed further away from its inflation goals. Um, as well, and uh, this is further away from my baseline, uh, it could have a, a negative effect on the, uh, on the U.S. economy itself, uh, pushing up uh, unemployment. So the baseline case is simply there's a, uh, more right. of a risk of a shock, right. and uh, the Fed should respond to that. So is the premise of a cut that, okay, because of these fears out there, because of this risk that's emerging, that the Fed funds rate ought to be 25 basis points lower? Or is it the idea that by doing a mid-meeting cut, by cutting 25 basis points now before the, week, the data starts to show up, that the Fed essentially is telling the market and telling the economy, we're here to play, we're here to take it seriously, and this is just the beginning, and if more is called for, then you know we're here. I view it as, my answer is yes. <laughs> so I, I think you are uh, playing a role of uh, uh, trying to buttress the economy, um, if you cut by 25 or even by as much as 50. But really, you see, what you see in markets is a pricing in of a fear that central banks are going to face shocks that they are either unwilling or unable to deal with. And I think by moving now, the Fed would be able to would be signaling no, you don't have to worry about this Federal Reserve, at least. Uh, mm -hmm. This central bank is, is on watch. But this isn't a liquidity issue. This is not a financial issue. Um, this is something more. This, a rate cut doesn't solve the problem at the root of it. Um, we've, we've seen how the perceived risk of recession has increased and is rising, but it has nothing to do with the cost of money. Would fiscal policy be a more effective mm -hmm. response than monetary policy? Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a great point, Scarlett. I, I, it, my, Monetary policy typically is not about treating the root cause of, of, of what's going on. It's really trying to treat the symptoms of lower prices and lower employment. And by stimulating, by cutting interest rates, um, you are helping to offset um, a shock that's coming from, uh, obviously, something medical uh, that the Fed has no, no ability to, to directly treat. Um, would monetary, would fiscal policy be helpful? Uh, last week, when, at a conference uh, hosted by the University of Chicago, um, Fed, Fed policy leaders uh, were talking about, well, we don't have a lot of tools in the toolkit. Maybe Congress should be ready to move. Um, and I, I think that, that that's that's something that maybe not for this shock, but going down the road, I, I would like to see Congress be more of a in a position to to take up the slack if monetary policy isn't sufficient. It seems to many people that there is an inherent uh, conservatism on the uh, FOMC, and I don't mean politically per se, but not in eager to take very big risks, wanting to see uh, clear evidence that the data requires a cut before being willing to cut, uh, you know, not rocking the boat uh, too much. You were not long ago on the uh, FOMC as president of the Minneapolis Fed. Culturally, inside, uh, in that meeting room, is there the appetite or the willingness to do something sort of bold and unexpected like a mid-meeting rate cut? Or is that just very difficult given how the uh, central bank operates? That's a great question, Joe. I, I, my own feeling is, you know, this is something I called for um, that the Fed should do. I think the Fed is very unlikely to do it, um, I think partly because of culture. Um, they worry a lot about, suppose we cut rates and then we have to, you know, two months go by and we have to raise them back up. People are going to criticize us, say we made a mistake. So they, they really prefer to, to um, have clear evidence before, before they, they move. With that said, uh, I do want to applaud the Fed for having moved last year. I think they moved in response to increased risks to the world economy. 
And, uh, you know, I'm optimistic that even though they might not do uh, make a mid-meeting move, as I, as I urge right. them to do, uh, they might move at their next meeting. They might move at their next meeting. They're going to look at the data. They keep saying that they're data dependent. Obviously, we had the IHS market purchasing uh, managers index, <clears throat> excuse me, last week falling to 49.6, which uh, really concerned a lot of investors, Professor. This isn't usually a market moving data points, but we are looking at everything and anything we can get our hands on. What data point will you be looking at carefully uh, to determine whether this has tipped us closer to recession? Uh, so... You know, I, I, I look at the same data as everyone else. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be looking at uh, non-farm payrolls when they come out. Uh, I think we, we're seeing some interesting movements in, in JOLTS data, um, mm. in, you know, interesting and bad news in JOLTS data. Um, you know, I, my baseline outlook, though, remains very optimistic. It's simply that when you're so close to the zero or bound, risk considerations really have to be much more paramount in driving the stance of policy. And so you don't just look at the data, mm. you look at the risks of the data. So, Professor, then, I mean, when we talk about just, uh, I guess, the signaling that comes out of the Fed and the way the market and really a lot of participants in the economy interpret it, if the Fed, let's say they didn't cut rates itself uh, in March or even before then, but let's say you started to hear a more serious discussion about an expansion of QE or, I guess, a sort of a restarting of QE, particularly on the longer end of the curve, does that send the wrong message, though, to the market with regards to either the health of the economy and really, I guess, the health of the markets themselves? Uh, you have to be, you know, it's like when you get on the plane and they tell you that, um, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've got all these uh, stopgap measures in case uh, things go awry. We don't all immediately rush out of the plane. I think you just have right, to but be. If the But if the thing drops down from the ceiling, everyone panics. If the things drop down in the ceilings, then uh, you do start to panic. But right. I think the Fed has to be in a position of communicating ahead of time about um, and being clear that they're always on a watch for risk and being willing to respond aggressively to risks. Um, then I think it becomes clear that what's making you move is that you're worried about a risk and not necessarily that the risk itself has, has already hit the economy. Mm. I don't think, I mean, again, I do think that uh, uh, market participants are aware the Fed doesn't see a lot of information, especially about the course of uh, the coronavirus that's not, not available to the public. And so I don't think that's the major concern. It's really the Fed should be concerned that markets doubt their, their will to, to act aggressively enough in, in, uh, in when risks materialize. You know, something that strikes me is that the stock market, I don't know, it's something like 5% off its all-time highs, still incredibly elevated uh, over the last year, and that we get this little dip of, of about, that lasts about a week and a half, and suddenly people are talking about financial conditions and the need to cut. Are we at a place in the economy where financial assets relative to the size of the economy are just so big that there's almost no stomach to tolerate a decline of financial assets because of the feed-through effect that that has on consumer confidence, animal spirit, business investing, and so forth? So to be clear, uh, I wrote my, you know, I, I'm not that fast a writer, so I wrote the drafts <laughs> of my post before I knew what well, was going to happen you, in the market. Of course. And, uh, but and so I, I, what, I, what I was uh, suggesting for the Fed to do was not based on what markets right. are, are doing, and I don't think the Fed should be responding that way. I think it's, uh, no, I, I, I don't think we, you know, we can certainly tolerate a, a <coughs> declines of the, st of the stock market of the size we saw today. It's more, I, I, for me, the feed-through effect that I worry about more is the pursuit of safe havens uh, driving up the dollar, mm. and then that makes it harder for the Fed to achieve its 2% inflation yeah. target. Um, and then you lose, start to lose the credibility on that. And I think that's the risk. The Fed has been skirting with that danger for five years or even longer, and that is the, the risk that I, I, I view as being really more material out of this, out of this, uh, out of this particular uh, um, shock.